Hey everyone, Keegan here with Dark Arrow. A common question we get is how do you decide when you're gonna make a component in-house versus outsource it? That's a really good question because it oftentimes comes down to more than just whether or not we have the means or the equipment to do so, but some other key variables. Let's take a look at what those are with some specific examples for the Dark Arrow One nose landing gear. I'm in front of the aircraft right now. We've got the cowlings pulled off and the engine is moved back and we have our new nose gear redesigned, assembled, and bolted up to the airframe here. Most of the components that you see we're able to make in-house on our Tormach CNC mill. So like these trunnion halves, the upper and lower drag lengths, some of these components down here. But there are a couple components that we chose to outsource and I wanna point a few of those out. The first one is this strut component right here. This is about two inch outer diameter and then 12 inches in length. So it extends up into these trunnion halves. So with this component, we maybe could have made it on our Tormach, but it would have been really challenging to do. Ultimately, this is a lathe component, which we don't have in house. We just don't have a lathe here in the shop. So the very first reason for outsourcing is probably the most obvious one, which is if you don't have the means or the equipment to do so, it's probably an in, a good indication that you're gonna wanna outsource that component. Like I said, we could have tried to make this on the Tormach, but given the amount of time and effort and energy we'd have to put into it, it just simply wasn't worth it for us. So reason number one that you don't wanna outsource is just simply, do you have the means to do so? There are a few other components that we outsourced, which include the engine mount arms, which are these components right here. So there's actually four pieces total. There's these inner covers, and then there's these outer arm pieces. So two pieces on each half. And what they do is they serve a couple purposes. One, they provide a mounting point for our, our trunnion and our strut to attach to. They serve as a pivoting location and they're also structural. So any loads that come from a high landing get transferred up into our arms and then ultimately into our engine mount. Lastly, and the other thing that you can't see right now, but we'll maybe throw some B-roll up on the screen is that this is an integrated gearbox assembly. So this motor drives the gear and retracts it up into the airframe during flight. So a lot going on with these intricate components. These are something that we could actually make in-house, but we decided to do out of house. And the reason for that came down to timing. With the Tormach CNC mill, we can really only make one part at a time, at least for these prototype components. We haven't set anything up for production where we're doing multiple parts at once. So from a timing perspective, we had a certain goal or a schedule that we wanted to hit to get all these components completed. For making these four parts after making all these other ones, it would have pushed that timeline out. So outsourcing became a good option for us in that case. So what does outsourcing look like? How do we do that? Let's head over to the computer quick and take a look and also talk through the other reasons why you might want to outsource. I have the CAD model pulled up for the engine mount. And I mentioned those four arm components that we had outsourced. We teamed up with Zometry to get these made. We do have a brand relationship with them, but this is more of a recent development. We've used them in the past quite a bit to make other components like this guy. Once we have our components selected that we want to outsource, the next thing to do is to take those CAD files and to download them. So I'll demonstrate on one of these components, but the process is pretty similar for the other three. So let's say I have this cover download it as a step file, what you do next is go over to Zometry and start a new instant quote by uploading that file. I've already got it uploaded, so we'll just skip that process and take a look at the part that I uploaded. Once your part is uploaded, from there you can select the process that you want, the material that you want, tolerances, and every bit of information that they need to make the part. They have other capabilities for 3D printing, water jet cutting, and so forth, but in this case we're mostly concerned with CNC machining, so let's take a look at what that looks like. One thing I like about it is that when you upload that step file, they give you a visual confirmation that you uploaded the correct part and just an overall idea of what that part looks like. I mean, you should already know, but it's just nice to have that visual confirmation that that is the right component. So you can select your process, you can select your material, the finish type, 
the tolerances that you want, and you can also upload a print to communicate even more information about that part. From there, it's a matter of selecting the quantity that you want and also where you want it made, which kind of just more or less dictates the price and the amount of turnaround time to get that part. So let's talk about price really quick because I think that's on everyone's mind when it comes to outsourcing components. There are a lot of variables that feed into cost, but the biggest one is probably just your quantity or how many do you need produced. So at lower quantities, if you're getting just one off, the cost is a little bit higher, but if you're getting multiple or larger volumes, you can get economies of scale and bring that price down. In the case of these four parts, the price was a little bit higher, but when you're considering outsourcing, that price might be worth it if it brings that overall project timeline down. That was a high level overview of how we use Zometry to outsource a component. Let's jump back over to the aircraft and see how the rest of the process turned out. After we got everything submitted and hit buy, it was back to work on our end, milling up the other components that we needed to make up the engine mount and nose gear assembly. The timing for the isometry parts actually worked out really well. Right around the time that those parts were showing up, we were just finishing up the last component on our end. So we unpackaged them, inspected them, and then went right into assembling them to the components that we had made in-house. Everything came together really well and we're really excited with how it turned out and got it bolted up on our airframe and went right into testing. So that's pretty much the process that we go through for determining whether or not we're going to outsource a component. Now, we were pretty specific with the context of the situation, which was CNC components on a prototype uh, unit here, but the same concept of considering your key variables of do you have the means to make it in-house, what's your quantity, what's your cost, and what's your timing, also applies to whether or not you're making 3D printed components, stamped metal components, composite components, and if you're scaling that up to production, you still want to consider those types of variables. Perhaps there are other variables that you consider when you're determining whether or not you're going to outsource a component or keep it in-house. We'd be really interested to hear what that looks like or sounds like, so leave a comment below and let's keep the discussion going down there. Otherwise, that's all we've got for you guys. We'll catch you in the next video.